Honestly, I really don't give a rat's ass. <laughs> if men, if the male species is depleting, okay. What? You guys, what? you guys have had your time to shine. If you guys want to get better, you guys can do that yourselves, but I'm not going to get you out of the slump. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, what? it's just like, I don't really care. Like, that's on you guys. If you guys aren't like working or not going to college, then I don't know how to fix that. I am. So I don't know why you aren't. That all men are dickheads. Uh, yeah. Can I just say that? Because yeah. I actually don't know anyone that's that nice who's a man. For those of you that got annoyed at me for my response to that video, let's try that sentence, but with a different demographic. To be fair, all black people are dickheads. Can I just say that? Because I don't know anyone that's nice that's black. To be fair, all gay people are dickheads. Can I just say that? Because I've never actually met anyone that's nice that's gay. Hopefully we can all agree that neither of those sentences are appropriate for anyone to say. So let's all come to a middle ground and accept that we don't like misandry and we don't like misogyny. But unfortunately, within every demographic in the world, there are twats. And we have to accept that that's the exception to the rule and not the rule itself. In all honesty, I'm afraid of all men, especially the self-proclaimed male feminists. I think they scare me the most. This is a message to all the men out there, and especially the ones who are prone to feeling guilt, even if they aren't directly responsible for any wrongdoing. There's absolutely nothing you can do to change the mind of women like that who are committed to demonizing you. If you are a man, you are to be feared, period. It doesn't matter if you go out your way to explain how you're the perfect brother, ally, boyfriend, husband, father, male feminist, none of it matters. So please, quit all the social media pandering to women in the self-proclaimed alliance to feminism because honestly, it's not a good look and it probably makes you look more suspicious than it makes you look good. Just ignore the social media manufactured men hate and be a genuinely good person in real life. That's where it really matters anyways. Oh, so it is all men. You sure you want to stick with that? Wouldn't that mean that you and others like you are included in that all men? You know, since by the dictates of the belief system you believe in, trans men are in fact men, right? And you might say, well, no, not me, because I'm still viewed and regarded as a woman by others, like you did in this video. But then you'd be simultaneously admitting that what you personally identify as has no external significance in the real world, since people will always view you as what you are, not what you claim to be. And I'd be real careful admitting something like that. You know, for the sake of the entire trans ideology. So if you agree that you and other trans men are included in the all men that should be feared and arbitrarily demonized, then hey, at least your beliefs are consistent. Consistent in its lack of logic and nuance, but consistent nonetheless. But if you don't agree that that should be the case, then it shows that you implicitly understand the all men sentiment is a stupid one and you're only saying it to serve a counterproductive ideological agenda. So again, I ask you, is it really all men? Or is the world actually a little more complex than that? Or maybe you believe it is all men until it's inconvenient to you and others in your identity politics community. Then it's all men except you guys, right? I don't know. You tell me. This is no hate to the original creator because I've been there, like I fully understand. But I think misandry, like genuine misandry, not just like women should post on Twitter, is one of the most counterproductive things that modern, specifically online feminist spaces have co-opted. And it's specifically because it leads, it necessarily leads to a pipeline of turfism and therefore transphobia. And before I get into the explanation, um, to reiterate what I was saying before, there's different levels of misandry. There's just like innocent meme posting, and then there's like actual genuine ideological misandry that usually leans into things like bioessentialism. And that's the issue, bioessentialism. It's at the core of all turf and even broader transphobic views. But the way that this relates to misandry and turfism is through bioessentialist beliefs specifically about biological males. For example, the typical, like, genuine misandrous belief is that men are inherently more violent or aggressive, and that's where the pipeline to turfism lies, because turfs also agree with this, but take it a step further in saying that because of this, we should now exclude biological males from broader feminist and female spaces. Without getting too far off topic, for those of you who might be susceptible to this rhetoric, there's very simple issues that arise with this type of position. 
Because while men do have a hormonal predisposition to be more violent or aggressive, these things aren't inherent or innate, not essential to their core. They can be easily counteracted through forms of socialization that don't encourage or praise them to engage in such violent or aggressive behaviors. And even furthermore, if you were to adopt this belief, you would necessarily have to believe that every single time a man's testosterone level increased or spiked and therefore their urge to be violent or aggressive is irresistible, which obviously isn't true. And this is again due to the belief that these hormonal urges or predispositions are inherent and cannot be counteracted through things like socialization and just normal resistance. And while we might not have these ideal forms of socialization right now, it is far more productive to advocate for the dismantlement of certain social structures like patriarchy that lead to these forms of socialization, rather than trying to exclude a very minuscule portion of the population from public spaces like bathrooms, which isn't even the common place of abuse, the household is. This refutation is kind of skewing away from my original point, but I think it's important for like newer feminists who might not have read as much theory to be familiar with why these positions are bad, even though they are presented to them as feminist. Anyways, in conclusion, um, this is kind of meant to answer the question of like where are all these TERFs coming from? It's genuine misandry, again, not the shit posting on Twitter, like actual ideological misandry that leads to a pipeline of bioessentialism and therefore TERFism. This man is dropping truth bombs. Take a listen. I mean, doesn't the Quran say that men have authority over women? Well, don't they? I mean, according to your own narrative, men have been running the show. The feminists are asking for their so-called rights from who exactly? Okay, if you didn't have uh, what you call patriarchy, then what you would have is a hell on earth for yes. women. Because clearly, uh, women do not have the power to coerce men, to force men, to make men deal with them this way or that way. If, uh, if you're out somewhere and a man starts to chat you up and you don't want to be chatted up, what do you do? You tell him, I have a boyfriend, yeah. I'm married, and he goes away. You have to conjure up an imaginary man to get him to back off because nine times out of ten, only a man can keep another man in check because men are inherently more dangerous than women. Instead of patriarchy, replace that word with bodyguard. What makes more sense? For you to be my bodyguard or for me to be your bodyguard? Who do you think is more capable of protecting who? From who? If men didn't protect women, who would? Why, men would do whatever they wanted. And isn't your bodyguard uh, responsible for you? Shouldn't you listen to him if he says, for example, don't go here, don't go there, or um, let's take this route instead of that route because it's safer? Isn't that authority? Yeah. But he's doing it for you. Would you uh, feel resentment about that authority? That's irrational. Look, you cannot dismiss the importance of physicality, human physicality. We're physical beings. Technology does not level the field the way you think it does. And if you were walking in the street uh, by yourself late at night and you see a man coming towards you, uh, which one of the two of you is more likely to be afraid? Who's going to be scared of who? Me. But see, you in the West have confused this. The feminists have confused this. The power imbalance. Uh, that literal physical power imbalance, that imbalance in the ability to coerce and exert force and to be violent, is just a fact and a reality of the power imbalance between men and women. But your culture uh, is in love with power. It's in love with force. It's in love with violence. So to you, whoever has the greater capacity for violence, whoever has uh, the greater capacity for uh, being dangerous, then that person is better. The one who can exert his will is better. Whoever has the power to force people to do something is better. And whoever is weaker is less. It's because you admire power so much and you admire force and you admire the ability to coerce uh, that you find yourself resenting that men have authority over women or the idea, the concept of men having authority over women because you think it's unfair. You think that women are being deprived but remove that authority and see how deprived you'll be. 
remove that authority and you will be in danger. You will be deprived of your safety. You'll be deprived of your security, your freedom, and maybe your life. You invent the concept, this concept of equality, and treat it as sacred, and you believe in it religiously, uh, with religious devotion, and you demand that everyone believes in it, and no one can dare doubt the uh, reality and the uh, holy truth of the concept of equality, even though all evidence that you are exposed to on a daily basis disproves uh, that concept. So you'll make fun of us and you'll look down on us and you'll insult our intelligence for believing in something that you say we don't have any proof for. Meanwhile, you're believing in something for which all of the proof that exists disproves it. You see how incoherent your thinking process is? You see, all modern feminism has to their advantage are words. And a lot of people might say the pen is mightier than the sword. That's true to an extent. I'm a writer. I know the power of words, especially well-written words. However, in order for words to be effective, they have to make sense. There has to be truth in those words. And without that truth, you're just dealing with Disney. And that's what the feminist movement is, basically. Disney. Because there's no truth behind it. If you take away the patriarchy, what does feminism have? Nothing. Women would be in danger without the patriarchy. The patriarchy is what keeps us safe. Because if you take those laws away, again, we have nature. We have the nature of man and the nature of woman, which is not just the emotional nature, it's also the physical nature. And that as women, we do not want to confront because we know what it means. We have no foot to stand on. We are physically weak compared to men. The only demographic of human beings on this planet that women have an advantage over are children. And we utilize that advantage as well. So without the structure of patriarchy, you would have men dominating women, women dominating children, and children dominating each other. That's the way it works. That's the totem pole of power. And as he stated in this video, as a culture, we are obsessed with violence and strength and dominance. What it boils down to, the anger that's in a lot of women. We're jealous of men. And I don't care what you say to me. That is the truth. Because you know, you know what physical strength means. You know what dominance means. And you know you don't have it. So you're trying to write it into history. And good luck with that. Good luck with trying to write something fantastical. Yeah, you might end up with a movie like Avatar. Visually beautiful. Fantastical. But in real life, it doesn't make sense. It's not going to happen. There are no blue people. You might have movies like She-Hulk and, and, and other films where women, women have an unimaginable amount of strength where they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with men. But as we know, that is not real life, right? And feminism is not real life. It's a fantasy. It's a dream. What the man said in this video is reality, and that reality terrifies us. So hence, feminism, trying to create some illustrious words that is going to make men feel guilty about their nature. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, it might work with some guys, but guys are not going to give up who they are. And we're always going to need men, no matter what. And women can sit there fantasizing about a world where men don't exist, good luck with that too, because men are always gonna be here. So will bears and other animals that we're afraid of. They're always gonna be here. Nothing you can do. That's the planet we live on. So keep working with your words.
keep trying to make men feel guilty, keep trying to make men feel that we need an egalitarian planet. Egalitarianism doesn't exist. Equality does not exist between the genders. It simply does not. You could give people rights. We have those. I can vote. I can work. I can do what I want to do. But what more do you want? You want to bend the very nature of men? It won't happen. Because men are different. And so are you.